Uh, th thank you, Sharon. Uh, I was surprised to be the only person here left from that 1982 uh, panel. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was a teenager then, as you know. Uh, so, um, anything new since 1982, I suppose that should be the topic. Uh, but first, I want to uh, thank very much uh, Marianne and Blake for telling us, uh, giving us some analyses of birth certificates and vital data, because uh, these compilations of birth certificates uh, that every state vital registrar has to work on and submit to the National Center of Health Statistics and then compile is such an extraordinary resource and must be maintained and sustained. And I think that right now, I think they would agree with me, the amount of resources devoted in states and nationally to the maintenance of these systems is inadequate and needs needs support. Uh, without this kind of information, there's, there's so little we can do. And unfortunately, the public, including the medical public, is woefully uneducated about the value of vital data. So for example, people don't even know what a birth certificate is. Um, uh, sometimes a lot of it, uh, importance is attached to the occasional birth certificate. You know, for example, this is a birth certificate for a gentleman born in Hawaii in 1961. <laughs> And a lot of controversy was raised about this official legal document, and some people went so far as to claim that it wasn't real and there was a need for a long form. And one of the uh, people who uh, commented on this uh, presented a piece of paper which was not a birth certificate, claiming that it was the real birth certificate. Uh, this is actually from a gentleman named Mr. Trump who showed on national television this uh, piece of paper, which he claimed was a real birth certificate, it's in fact a hospital souvenir. Uh, and uh, that just gives you a flavor of the level of ignorance about vital data that permeates uh, everything we do. And it's so unfortunate. And I, I wish uh, the medical uh, profession would uh, be more uh, outspoken in its support of the need for keeping good birth certificate data as well as uh, other vital data. So, Key changes since 1982, uh, we've had a, a decrease in the birth rate, but actually relatively steady fertility, except that fertility has been moved to a higher age bracket. So I was noticing that from the data presented uh, uh, by Dr. Hamilton, that 20 to 24 year olds, traditionally the place where babies got born, dropped to second place among age groups in 97, to third place in 2007, and that about 40% of mothers are now over 30, and the mean maternal age is 28. When I was an intern, uh, I remember a head of obstetrics uh, in my hospital saying, we're referring to a 28-year-old woman as an elderly prima gravida. And uh, uh, all the residents got very upset. I remember that, female residents. Anyway, uh, we have different populations. Uh, 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 the, the white births were 54%, as we were shown in 2011. They were 80% in 1982. That's quite a substantial demographic shift. The shift in the birth populations is, 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 tells us what is going to happen in the future. Uh, uh, They're the way ahead of our population figures. For example, notice that the, uh, the, uh, the number of non-Hispanic uh, births is so large now, and that's, that's just what the future of the United States will look like. Of course, operative delivery rates are huge, C-section rates over 30 percent. They were 5 percent in 1972. It's not so long ago, 5 percent. Uh, how much, how, how much uh, great things must we have done for babies' brains? How many cases of damage have we saved by doing this? I'm not sure, but anyway. Uh, early, much earlier interventions and complications at earlier gestations as people feel more comfortable with a preterm infant. Uh, and that's reflected in the fact that, to my astonishment, uh, the, th the, the 40th week is no longer modal for births. Uh, 39th is and has been for some years now. And in fact, uh, some, some of the data, there was one year where the thir 38th week was more common than the 40th, which is an extraordinary shift in patterns. But it seems like we're backing off from that and improving. And of course, as you've seen, the incredible increase in multiple births, which seems now to be leveling off, associated with infertility treatments. Now, we also have new information. Now, uh, in 1982, one of the things we recommended very strongly was that we finally know who was born uh, in a birthing center, who was born at home. And we also said it would be nice to know whether that was planned that way. Because as you've seen, a baby born at home can mean many things. And uh, 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 it took until 89 until we at least got 
the revision that allowed us to distinguish, as Marion has shown us, between uh, birthing centers and home. And till 2003, the partially used birth certificate, uh, as, as Marion said, used in 31 states in the District of Columbia, that also tells us if it was intended to be born at home. But that's only for part of the United States. So it takes about 20 years for a recommendation to be up, taken up. So uh, you can look forward, the younger people in the audience, to the good things that will eventually come. Uh, how about the non-changes? Actually, I'm more impressed by how little things have changed than by how much. Um, the total number of births is actually fairly consistent around three and a half to four million, even though the US population has increased around 35% uh, since 1982. Uh, it's not so much the fertility rate that's down, but the fraction of the women of the population that are women of reproductive age is lower as the baby boomers age out of fertility. Um, so we'll have to see how that persists over time. It's actually the number of births is kept steady by the increase in total population. Uh, uh, as, as fertility study, but the number of women of reproductive age is smaller as a fraction. Uh, but it's interesting how consistent uh, the number of out-of-hospital births is about around 1%, plus minus a little bit since then. Um, but we have noticed, as uh, has been pointed out by uh, uh, Marianne, uh, uh, nearly, uh, we're getting close to 2% since 2005 in white women, uh, this choice of out-of-hospital birth, which seems to be very uh, uh, applied to a subset of the population is, 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 is a notable recent trend. And it's still very hard to separate intended and unintended with the 20 states in New York City that still use the 1989 revision, I presume. Right now we have uh, the battle of the birth certificates. We have these two forms going around which has bedeviled uh, uh, the, the NCHS because even some, some variables now which I used to look at regularly, uh, like uh, percent of women attending prenatal care in the first trimester, I, they don't publish anymore because there are two different estimates from different ways of counting on the two circulating birth certificates. Um, so uh, I don't know how they, one, another topic for another IOM panel is what we're going to do about all this, but that's another story entirely. Uh, we also still don't know, however, the hospital births that might have been planned home births or uh, out of hospital, which would be very useful to know. That's still not on any birth certificate, but it would be a lovely thing to, to help us understand what's going on. And of course, birth settings are so heterogeneous. What is a home? A home can be uh, a very comfortable place with a nice ambulance access, and, but a home can also be a five-story walk-up where they just turned off the electricity and you can't get anybody out. So home, we don't know what home is. Home is anything someone defines as a home, whereas a birth setting at least may have some uh, uh, context to it that you can uh, define. It becomes very difficult to know what to make of the term home in a, on a birth certificate. Uh, just to reiterate some of the key points I took out of the, uh, the closer look that Marianne gave us, that two-thirds are home, one-third birth center. I guess I was a bit surprised by that. I would have thought the birth center component would have increased. But given the numbers of birth centers um, we're seeing now, what I think the quote was around 200, 250 nationally. It was actually 150 in our report in 1982. So we haven't had as dramatic an expansion as I might have thought. Uh, and it's striking to note that 88% of all home births are planned. Uh, where this is recorded, as you noted in your footnote, Marianne, excluding the missing, and I wonder if there was, aren't a lot of missing where people don't actually say whether it's planned or unplanned, either on purpose or not. Uh, but just 33% of black home births, so there's really this demographic difference between the out-of-hospital setting that's so striking. Uh, most out-of-hospital births are delivered by midwives, and also, this little home birth is more likely to be premature, surely reflecting that component that's unplanned, that is mixed in and makes evaluation so very difficult. And, uh, but generally, very encouragingly, we are seeing a low risk profile for women uh, born uh, out of hospital, which is what we hope for, uh, a fewer prime MIPS, married, and so forth. Now, I want to give you a local story. I have a birthing center four miles from my house in Okemos, Michigan. Uh, and this is what appears on their website. It is with great sadness that we announced the closing of the birth center uh, just recently, last September. Uh, and uh, they've attended over 200 births, uh, 700 births since 2003. And I think uh, these are, you know, uh, people who in our community who we, we would like to sustain. We'd like to see that option available. And it's a sad reason. Um, uh, why did it close? Well. Uh, unfortunately, um, and this is 
from the newspapers. I don't know the actual uh, legal status. Unfortunately, uh, there's a lawsuit because a baby died following a breech delivery, a breech vaginal delivery was undertaken there, and uh, the baby was born in very bad condition, transferred to the local hospital, was in intensive care for 12 days and died. So this is not what we want to see in birth centers. And unfortunately, and I don't know anything about how this came to be, the end result is the closing of a birth center and an option for, for mothers. So uh, I want to point out that the data you saw are about, from birth data, we didn't yet consider uh, or NCHS has not yet added to this mix anyway, mortality data, which would be available from the linked birth and death files, which should permit analysis of uh, mortality data by place of birth. And even maybe in some jurisdictions, intrapartum fetal death, which I think is a very important outcome and is well recorded in some jurisdictions, but not all. Um, and uh, of course, home for, now this might be useful for looking at uh, birth center births, but home births, I think, cannot be analyzed this way until we know intendedness, because that's such a mix, and, un, and, and, and you could not draw reasonable conclusions. Uh, but I think we should be monitoring planned out-of-hospital births using vital data to compare to hospital births, not just looking at out-of-hospitals, but also the hospital births. In terms of the risk factors for problem births, which we saw uh, presented by uh, Marianne, uh, but also neonatal and maternal mortality, if, that, if such exists, maternal morbidity, and neonatal morbidity, these are some of the things that I listed uh, are available off uh, birth certificates. Um, uh, these kinds of items are currently available on birth certificates, so they could be tabula tabulated on, on a national level. Um, and I think there should be surveillance of sentinel events. In general, uh, uh, we already do have state programs that identify uh, maternal deaths. And we might want to consider that in planned out-of-hospital deliveries, we should be monitoring for any breech vaginal deliveries as well as the uh, other adverse outcomes. Uh, because, uh, you know, these are kind of events that you should actually should be investigated almost any time uh, they occur to see what the circumstances were, whether in hospital or out of hospital. And at the same time, I think also the other side of the coin, assessing birth center deliveries and planned home deliveries of low-risk women compared to hospital deliveries of, this, of women of similar risk profiles in terms of cost effectiveness, satisfaction, and specific benefits such as higher rates of breastfeeding or other things you may see. And I, it's interesting that we called for all this in 1982. In fact, we called for a big research agenda and program. You know, we gave study designs. Uh, I don't recall anything huge coming out of that. Maybe the data weren't there. but. Uh, Maybe now with a second, you know, every 30 years, if you look at something, maybe the energy gets going. Maybe we'll see uh, something happen. Okay, thank you very much.